Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents, and I want to introduce to you our assistant pastor of God's Church of Love Online, Peter Mai. He spoke at the church, oh my God, in Chino, and he did a wonderful job. I want you to hear how he shares, and I hope you're challenged as you hear this message. A privilege and an honor to be up here, you know, speaking to you guys today. And mm -hmm. actually, it's a miracle that I'm standing up here, you know, because this is actually my first time ever doing this. <laughs> not, only, not only doing a Kickstarter, but actually ever speaking in front of people like this, right? And it's not just because it's the first time, but because this. This fear of man has been something that God, like, like something that I have dealt with so, so hard, like growing up, that caused me a lot of problems. So uh, it's a miracle because uh, it's only because of God that I'm, I'm up here doing this. You know? And the reason I'm telling you guys this is because um, we're asking everyone to step out in faith, right? And do something that they're completely uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the reason why God has me up here speaking to you guys, because I am doing something, stepping out of faith right now, and it's been a battle for me, like a real battle. Like, the old guy wants to come back and say, you're not, you're not going to do really good up here, you know? But, you see, the reason why I'm still up here right now is because every single time I took a step in faith, God showed up. Mm -hmm. When I was that's afraid right. to go out and and just talk to someone, you know. I have brothers and sisters that disciple me to get out and step out and, and, and hey, you know, uh, and I pray for you. And then the next step, you know, casting out a demon. And, and then the next step, you know, praying for healing and, and then continue praying when I don't see it, you know. And then baptizing. So every single step that has led me up to here has been a step of faith. Amen. Right. So when I said... Oh, I can see right here. When I said yes to Jesus Christ, right, I chose to follow him and just be like him and to be a disciple. And that's what we're, that's what Jesus is asking every one of us to do, is that when we said yes to Jesus Christ, we said yes to following him. Let me see if this works. Okay. If we looked at Jesus Christ as the first fruit, right? He's the first fruit of all of us, the first fruit of the church. Let's take a look at um, this cycle of a fig tree. Right. The, the fruit has seeds that, that needs to be planted in good soil and water, right? And then the, the outer shell starts to die off, and then a root starts to form, and then a tree and a trunk, and when it matures, it produces fruit. And that continues on, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, it doesn't stop. If you take a look at from, from now, like from, from the first fruit now, and then a hundred generations from now, when that fruit, when that tree bears fruit, it should look exactly like this first fruit that ever, that ever bore it, right? That's good. So, do you look like the fruit of Jesus? Mm, that's good. Do you, you ever think about that? Each, <laughs> each generation of fruit that came from Jesus should look exactly like him. Hello. But why are we looking? There's a lot. And I was actually that person. You know, I came from a Catholic background. And then even when I was looking, even when the Lord found me after like a whole 10 years of doing meth and you know, you know, like super depressed and by myself and recluse and all these things. The Lord found me, and I, I read in the Word, and I and I couldn't find myself doing the same thing, and it just felt empty. Like, what is this? I was desiring something that I didn't know what it was, and why? <laughs> like, if we if we read the Word and we can go to church, right? We get the seed planted in us, and we get water. But if a if a tree gets planted inside a building. Do you think it'll have enough nutrients to grow? 
What, what do you think it needs? It needs sunlight. It needs to go out, outside, so that it can get the necessary sunlight to, for, you know, to get um, the increase to bear good fruit. Yeah. But there's a lot of people in church today that are comfortable in the shade. Mm, come on. Comfortable in the shade. But God says to bear fruit. Mm. So we are also called to bear fruit. That's right. And what is that? <clears throat> like, I've always heard that. And I'm just like, Lord, like, I can't. I want to bear fruit, but I just, I just don't know how. Mm-hmm. Why? Because today, there's something happened with church from, you know, from the old church until today, right? Something happened where unbelief came in, where comf- being comfortable came in, where the world came in, and where there's no more people teaching how to do what the word says. We are called to be disciples that make disciples. That's right. Right? Sorry, I'm moving to water. And if we're called to be, uh, to be disciples that make disciples, we first have to follow the one, the master. You know? So what does Jesus look like? Mm, come on. In John 6, 38, it says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If Jesus, I mean, like, if we, we know that that's all Jesus did. Everything, it doesn't matter what anybody else said. Like, Jesus' purpose was to do God's will. Right. And we saw him do it every <laughs> single day. He never missed a beat. All right, so what exactly did Jesus do? Well, Matthew 4, 23 says, And Jesus went down, went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and, and all kinds of disease among the people. This is what Jesus did. Like, if you look in every, every, single, uh, every single part of the gospel, this, this is all he did besides praying to God and eating. Like, he did this all the time. Right? This is what we should look like. I mean, yeah, we understand, like, everybody has fruit, right? And we... When we read the word and we get transformed by the word, right? Um, and then the Holy Spirit like transforms us, and we have um, we have we start to build like we start to like have the, the, the fruits of the spirit, right? Love, peace, joy, um, goodness, right? Self control, all that stuff. That's like the sweetness of the fruit. But every single fruit has seeds that desire to grow. Every single we all do. It's a, it's God has put it in us to bear fruit. Come on, Peter. And that's why people sit in the pews for years waiting and, you know, waiting for God to give us the call, right? Because we all think that there needs to be some special call <laughs> on your life in order to do what you read in the Word. <laughs> but Jesus already called us to do it. If we are to look like Jesus, we should be doing the very same thing. It's, it's pretty simple. It's not hard at all. The only thing that's hard is actually stepping out. And I'm not trying to say, condemn anybody for just sitting in the church. It's like, I was there, and I desired it, but I just didn't know how to do it. Like, I couldn't figure out, like, what does it look like to, be, to go out and actually make disciples or actually pray for someone. I didn't know because no one would... I didn't have anybody to disciple me. And this is the call of the church. This is the call of what TLR, what Last Reformation is really all about. It's the call of people to rise up, making disciples, who make disciples, who make disciples. Did you know that in Israel right now, they found a fig tree, a fig uh, seed, 2,000 years ago. That was, that, was, that was extinct 2,000 years ago. So basically in the time of Jesus Christ, right? And then they were able to plant the, those seeds and then bear fruit. And now they have fig fruits from, that were extinct from 2,000 years ago. Can you see the potential of the seed in you? Even if you've been waiting all your life. Come on. Right? All your life you've been asking God, like, Lord, pick me. Right? 
And he says, it's already in you, son. Come on. It's already in you, daughter. You just got to go and I will sing to you. And you will become just like me. Doing the same thing that the Father has called you to do. Right? So here, this is the reason why we really focus on Luke 10. Especially Luke 10, Luke 10 uh, 1 through 11, which is what I consider um, like God activating his disciples Come on. to do what he did. This is the Lord's basic training for the army of God. Woo. All right. Um, you know, the body of Christ is, is somewhat like the army, where there's many different, like every, everybody is doing something as a unit, like as, as one body, right? But there are many different offices, mm -hmm. you know? Right? You, you, you can go into the army and be a medic, be special forces, be infantry, you know, be uh, uh, intelligence, right? All these different things and all these different rankings. It's just like the body of Christ. Like we have so many different parts that do so many different things. And it's true. God does call you to do something special. He put it in your heart. But everybody who goes into the army, everybody who enlists in the army, all of them go to basic training. That's right. All of them do. Right? And that is why, like, this is not something that's just in the Bible. Like, a lot of people, because we don't get to see it, like, when we sit around and we don't see people doing it, and we just think that it's just a Bible story. But it's actually for us today. This is the call. This is the call that you've been waiting for. Wow. The call of Jesus Christ. So I want to go over, uh, I just want to actually read Luke chapter 10, 1 through 11, and then actually go over all the different verses more in, in more detail. Okay, so it says, Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide. For the labor of, uh, deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into the streets and say, even the dust oh, of your town I'm that glad clings glad to your feet, that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Thank Nevertheless, you. know this, that the kingdom of God has come here. Um, you know, we read this, and we might think it's just for the special elite disciples, you know. But we already saw that in Luke 9, he already sent out the 12. Those were the, like, if you were considered the elite, those were the elite 12 disciples, right? But he went and did the same thing to send the others. And we could imagine, like, what the 12, when the 12 came back, when all the testimonies that they said and did to these disciples, like, it just lifted up their spirits, you know? And as they went out, they already got discipled by what the others did. And it's, it's just from Jesus to the 12 to the 70, right. and now to all of us. That's right. Right? It's, it's, that's, that's simple. So, and, and uh, the, first, uh, the first verse, it says, After this, the Lord appointed, sent him to others, and sent them on ahead of him, two by two in every town, and every in, in place where he himself was about to go. So when I read this, uh, I was thinking, why did Jesus uh, go after them? Like, what was the reason why, like, if you, if you sent them to the place, 
right, to send the message, but then Jesus was planning to actually go there too. Like, what was the reason for that? And for me, like, God sort of, like, helped me remember, like, how I first started when I first went out. And I was so worried about <laughs> what to do, right? And I was so, like, like, I need to say it better, you know? I don't know, man, I messed up, and, and um, you know, like, did I, did I do it right, you know? Like, I put all this pressure on myself, yep. thinking that I was the one who was supposed to <laughs> say it. And if I didn't, I messed up, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, the reason why we go is because we're just messengers and uh, messengers and vessels of the Lord for His good news. Yes. Right? right, and we don't have to worry. It's important you get this because you don't have to worry about the outcome. Come Jesus on. is the one who does it. He goes, right? We deliver the message and be obedient to His command. And Come when on, you brother. know that you can do that, Come you on, just dude. do that, man. You just. You just, all you have to do is praise the Lord. That's it. Even when you don't see nothing happen. That's it. Praise Appreciate the Lord. Bro. I did what you told me to do. That's it. Right. I don't have to try hard. Amen. Right? Oh, come on. Speak the truth and let the Lord do the all the work. Mm -hmm. oh, come on, brother. Truth. Only the Holy Spirit can transform someone. Not Peter. Not you. You can't. Come on. You can love on them. Mm -hmm. And your love right the, sh the love that shines through you because of who you you know who you are in Christ mm -hmm. yes that can transform someone because that's the holy spirit